History of fertilizer development. Here's a look at some different uh, types of fertilizers. There's this granular spreader on the top left, granular bag of NPK on the top right, spreader spreading in a sports field on the bottom left, and then there's a liquid spray boom spraying along. The fertilizer provides plants with all sorts of nutrients uh, that are needed to grow strong and healthy. Even the poorest countries all around uh, the world use manure to enhance their fields. There's a tractor spread of manure on a field. Manure provides nitrogen for the plant. Uh, it breaks down slowly and over time increases the fertility of the farmland. They figured this out by uh, noticing spots in their fields that were more fertile than the other where animals kind of hung out and released dung. Approximately 8,000 years ago, farmers in Egypt, Rome, and Germany began to use minerals, wood ash, and manure on their fields. Uh, then in 1768, Johann Mayer produced a book and made his experiments with the use of gypsum public. His experiments went on to be used by many scientists across the world, uh, researching the use of gypsum. Here's uh, a look at just a granular gypsum that you spread. Soon after Mayer's study, uh, Victor Uark does a study on gypsum's effect on sulfuric acid. And uh, he believed that gypsum acted on the effect of the sulfuric acid in the composition. Uh, he determined this by looking at ashes of turf that contained the sulfate of ion uh, and lumina, the same thing that you would in gypsum. Um, chemist Justin Liebig promoted the importance of inor or inorganic minerals for plant nutrition. Uh, his work opened up an abundance of questions to scientists to address. Uh, he, he attempted to create a fertilizer by treating phosphate of lime and bone meal with sulfuric acid, but uh, couldn't properly be digested by the plant. In the 1730s, Charles Townshend studied the four crop rotation system uh, used to replace nutrients back into the soil. He divided four fields into four different types of produce, wheat, clover, oats, and turnips. Uh, he found to receive a much better yield and more crops doing this. Crops in the same place uh, in a field over time just decreases nutrient levels. And uh, But if you give the uh, land a good rest, uh, it'll put nutrients back into the ground. It's a diagram of just uh, different crops on different area year by year. And there's a look at cropland that's rotated. Then came along the Birkeland Eye process, which began uh, using nitrogen based fertilizers. Uh, it was developed by Norwegian scientist Christian Birkeland and his partner Sam Eyde. Uh, the process fixed atmospheric nitrogen into nitric acid. Uh, which is nitrogen fixation. Nitric acid could then be used to produce synthetic fertilizer. And they built a factory in Norway processing nitrogen fertilizer. Here's a look at the factory producing. Carl Bosch and Fritz Haber developed the Haber process in the early 20th century. Um, it replaced the Birkeland Eye process it was much more energy efficient and it utilized molecular nitrogen and methane ga gas and it produced ammonia. And they went on to be Nobel Prize winners for their findings. Here's a look at how nitrogen is um, turned into the ammonia. Then the Oswell process spinned off of uh, the Haber process. It's patented in 1902. Um, it just uses the uh, ammonia you used in the made in the Haber process to create fertilizers. And it's still the mainstay of fertilizer today. Here's a look at how it's uh, converted into the nitric acid, which is then used to create fertilizer. In 1927, Erling Johnson developed industrial method to produce nitrophosphate. This was known as the ODA process. Um, it acidified phosphate rock from the Southern Pacific Ocean with nitric acid to produce phosphoric acid. And once this is neutralized, it can be used as a nitrogen fertilizer. 
Then along came Englishman James Fisson, Edward Packard, and Thomas Hadfield. They founded commercial fertilizer companies. They created fertilizers from bone meal, and um, their discovery of caprolites led them to develop sulfuric acid. Um, and they went on to produce many fertilizer plants. There's a look at a modern fertilizer plant. It's a lot more complex than a Packard, Packard plant, which is sort of underground. Uh, by 1871, 80 factories started producing superphosphate. Uh, then there was a rise for North American companies, which forced all the Englishmen to all merge together, creating one big company, which turned into the Anglo-Continental Goro Works Company in 1917. Uh, they produced 85,000 tons of superphosphate in one year, and it was acquired. It acquired 40 different companies across the world. Commercial fertilizers have been rising steadily. Without commercial fertilizers, one third of all food being produced could not be produced. Uh, then there was slow release fertilizers process produced in 1936, and they were commercialized in 1955. On the left here, you have a slow release fertilizer, which is uh, in a capsule, and diffuses into the turf over time. And there's just a simple fertilizer on the lot. After World War II, there was a big spike in fertilizers due to the Green Revolution, which was a big increase in agriculture across the world. Um, and new plant seeds increased the uh, ability to absorb nitrogen. And after this, many competitions and monopolies were formed. And um, the mergers and acquisitions formed during this time are still the fertilizer companies and brands that you would see today. In the 1960s, the National Fertilizer Development Center started developing sulfur-coated urea. There's a look at sulfur-coated urea, sealed up urea and sulfur on the outside. I'll talk to you about the types of fertilizers and uh, different forms. Uh, you have single nutrient fertilizers, which would be like um, potassium and nitrogen fertilizer. And there's compound fertilizers, um, binary fertilizers, which is two component fertilizers providing nitrogen and phosphorate phosphorus to plants. These are known as NP fertilizers. NPK fertilizers, that uh, I showed you a picture of earlier, is a three component fertilizer which produces nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And then they list three numbers on the bag, like you saw earlier, like maybe like eight, 10, and 16, which, uh, separated by dashes, which describes how much is in each. Then there's slow release fertilizers, which release over time, so it doesn't burn up the, uh, the plant and uh, the turf. Um, so if you just threw a bunch of fertilizer on there and it diffused, it would burn up and die. Here's a look at different types of fertilizers. There's a liquid fertilizer jug that you would use to mix and uh, spray on a lawn or golf green. There's a spray boom, a spraying fertilizer on the golf course, a granular fertilizer, and a granular fertilizer spreader, spreading the golf course fairway. Uh, and then there's, uh, you can see granular fertilizer in a, in a grass, there's a widget grass right there. Uh, and that's a look at how fertilizers have developed over time and all the different forms of them.